After you've been selling for a while, you will quickly be able to identify the characteristics of certain types of buyers. In general, everybody is different. That's why we're all unique. However, a lot of people can be categorised into four groups based on their purchasing habits. The knowledge buyers are the ones who only want the facts to make an informed decision before they purchase. They want to hear about all the pros and cons a product or service has to offer before they decide whether or not it's the correct purchase for them. These sales can be time hungry as all of their questions need answering. It's not uncommon for them to leave after an initial meeting without buying. Sometimes they may come back and forth several times before they have made a final decision. Some of their most important questions surround how effective the product or service will be. For example, how long will it last for? And other such variables, such as product guarantees, after sales service and so on. Generally, the knowledge buyers have a technological, teaching or professional background. They're usually the people who read instructions from back to front before assembling anything and rely solely on the facts than personal opinions. If you do manage to sell to a knowledge buyer, they generally will be a loyal customer who will come back time and time again because they don't want to re-evaluate all of the information with another salesperson when they have already trusted you in the first place. A clever trick to win their trust is to make them feel as if they're right. So basically you're reinforcing their knowledge they have already gained or researched. Thus in their eyes you're their expert they have been looking for. Points to remember include Focus on the facts Don't challenge them Highlight after sales service Remember the pros and the cons Give them time Be their go-to expert The impulse knowledge buyers are generally less controlling than the knowledge buyers they still want to know all the facts and data regarding the product or service they're interested in buying. However, they're far more likely to take a salesperson's opinion. They come to a generalised conclusion, both on the fact and opinion. The reason why they're called the impulse knowledge buyers is because they make their decisions much quicker rather than delaying or thinking in greater detail about a purchase like the knowledge buyers. Once they have the facts and reassurance, they will most likely purchase on the same day. Generally, they are people who are intelligent, competitive and focused. They don't spend too much time on the small talk and want to achieve their goals quickly. A great idea is to highlight a timescale to them. For example, if you order the product today, it can be delivered tomorrow. Here are some points you should remember. Focus on facts. Highlight points quickly. Give your opinion. Reinforce their knowledge. Remember timescales. They're usually professional in everything they do. The creative buyers are the type of people who can see the big picture. They have a vision and like to inspire. Unlike the knowledge buyers and the impulse knowledge buyers, they're not really interested in the facts and figures. They're far more emotive and expressive. Usually having their own personal style and don't worry about day-to-day -day life. 
they are in it for the long term. If you can appeal to their vision, you could easily inspire them into purchasing the product or service you're offering. For some creative buyers, their vision can be different to the one you're attempting to sell. So, it's always best to ask as many questions as possible before you attempt to close a sale. However, if you do manage to build up a good relationship between yourself and the creative buyer, you can be confident in the knowledge that they will certainly recommend you to all their creative friends. Because if you have a mutual understanding of what they require, then you're most likely going to have the same understanding of what their friends and family will require as well. The people person is generally a buyer who strives for the greater good, whether that's in business or pleasure. Generally, this characteristic is combined to include other attributes, such as positive engagements, a team player, and excellent problem-solving skills, as their makeup is built upon an ethic of working with others. It can be a good idea to attempt to build a relationship with them, to gain their trust. As they're so positive about their team-related attributes, once you have gained their trust, they're more likely to purchase from you, because your opinion will be highly rated. For some, it can be a great mistake to overlook the different characteristics of their potential customers. Knowing all elements highlighted in this section will make you a more effective sales professional. Without this knowledge, you could easily be pitching the wrong sales presentation to the wrong person and ultimately making no money in the process. Being proficient in noticing and sensing each buyer from each category will take time and patience. However, once you have perfected it, there should be no stopping you. As well as knowing all the correct ways to close a sale, it's worth understanding some of the techniques which can actually put off potential customers. By knowing these methods, you can then evaluate your own performance and adjust accordingly. Firstly, harassing customers can make them dislike you. A sales professional should be just that professional at all times. Don't be aggressive, don't be rude and don't lose your temper. Always remember you have your reputation to uphold. If a customer says no, accept the fact and move on. You can always come back to them a few weeks or months down the line. Equally, it's extremely important to always tell the truth. Never lie about what your product or service can do. Only highlight the elements and benefits you can deliver on. A sales professional who makes false claims will always look incredibly stupid when the customer has found out that these were untrue. The customer is unlikely to ever trust you again. Even if you turn over a new leaf, they will tell everybody they know. It's simply not worth the trouble. You should also never be patronising to anybody you come across. Sometimes it can be hard to tell if you are. However, a good salesperson must be aware that they are no better than the average man or lady walking the street. We all breathe the same air and we all eat. Treat and respect everybody in the same manner as you would like others to treat you. To progress on this point, Always remember the person you're dealing with. Remember their name, what sport they like, and what music they like, if you get that far. Build a relationship with them. Remember they're just not names on a spreadsheet or in an address book. They're real people, so learn more about them. One final point you need to be aware of is the thin line between arrogance and confidence. In general, confidence is a major plus point. However, arrogance is an annoyance 
and it does annoy people. What's even worse is arrogance mixed with bragging. Any potential customer or client will find it virtually impossible to deal with you if you project yourself in this manner. To be an elite sales professional, you need to mix together the correct ingredients to create the nicest cake possible. Once you have perfected your own ingredients, then customers will be wanting you for breakfast, lunch and dinner.